Reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. The Jews disputed among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? So Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood have eternal life, and I will raise them up on the last day. For my flesh is true food, and my blood is true drink. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood abide in me, and I in them. Just as the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so whoever eats me will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven. Not like that which your ancestors ate and they died, but the one who eats this bread will live forever. Jesus said these things while he was teaching in the synagogue of Capernaum. The Gospel of the Lord. Powerful readings that we have today St. Paul's conversion on the road to Damascus. I think it's good on days like this for us to remember ourselves when was that time when we fully believed, when we actually felt the Lord seize us and we said, yes, Lord, I believe absolutely. That uh, when was the time that began the life that would see you here at Mass on a Friday at noon. And so I want to give great thanks for that. Paul totally encounters the Lord and gives the rest of his life telling everyone else about the Lord. In the Gospel, we're getting close to the end of the Bread of Life discourse. We've been reading chapter 6 of John's Gospel all this week, and we'll end tomorrow. Jesus describes himself as being sent by the Father. And this shocks the Jews. He also says that he shares the Father's life. And this shocks them even more. And then he says that those who eat his flesh and drink his blood will share the Father's life as well. So completely shocking to them. And many, many of them say, who can accept this? And they leave. Jesus does not call them back. He does not say, you misunderstood me. I was speaking in parables. I was speaking symbolically. He lets them go. And he actually, if we were coming tomorrow to read the gospel, he would say, to the others, and will you also leave? So he says to each one of us, will we also leave? And Peter answers for those gathered and for each one of us, Lord, to whom will we go? We have come to know that you are the Holy One of God. And so that's what has got each one of us here as well. We have come to know that he is the Holy One of God, and that When we receive Holy Communion, we receive his flesh. When we receive Holy Communion, we receive his blood. That his flesh, as he told us, is true food, and his blood is true drink. He was not speaking in symbols. He was speaking the reality, and it's one of the times that he is as clear as can be. So this is why we have taught from the very beginning of the church that it is so important that we receive Holy Communion so that we receive the life of Jesus. It is so important that we receive Holy Communion, that we receive and enter into the life of the Father. Why? So that we become more like him, that it changes us and transforms us so that we can take that likeness out into the world. 
And so the world will come to know him through us. It's a great challenge that each of us receives when we receive Holy Communion. We are called to take him, to become more like him, and take him out into the world and transform wherever the Lord places us. So reflecting on two things today. When was that moment that we knew the Lord was the Lord and our hearts were completely given over to following him, just like Paul? And the Lord challenges us by giving us his body and blood to become more like him. So cooperating with that and deepening our trust and our faith in the Eucharist that it is his true flesh and true blood so that we become more like him and take him into the world. Let us pray. And so we pray in thanksgiving on this day for the great vocation that is exemplified in the first reading that we all have received, the great relationship that we have with the Lord. And we ask the Lord to deepen it. For this grace, we pray to the Lord. And thanksgiving for the Eucharist. And thanksgiving for our belief that the Lord's words are true, that the Eucharist is his true flesh and true blood. And, Lord, we ask you to transform us, help us to cooperate with the great graces you give us, and help us take those graces out into our daily lives. For this grace, we pray to the Lord. For each one of you, for the intentions which you bring to this Eucharist and that you offer now in the secret of your hearts. For each of you and for your intentions, we pray to the Lord. For the intention for which this Mass is being offered, for the intentions of Jane Delva. For Jane, we pray to the Lord. For all of our sick, all those who have asked for our prayers, all those for whom we promise to pray, that the Lord heal them in all the ways they need to be healed, we pray to the Lord. For all those who live in particular anxiety about the, the pandemic, uh, about the virus, for those who live in fear and anxiety um, about getting it, or for those that have, that they will be healed from it. For an end to the pandemic, we pray to the Lord. And for all the faithful departed, we pray in a special way for the repose of the souls of all the deceased members of each of your own families, all the deceased members of each of our parishes, and for all the deceased religious sisters and brothers and clergy who have served this diocese, that the Lord grant all the faithful departed eternal rest and give us peace and comfort to all who mourn. We pray to the Lord. Father, we bring each of these intentions before you, those that have been mentioned aloud and those that each of us carry and offer in the sanctuary of our hearts. We ask you to hear and to answer them. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen.